Hey this is Class Creatives and in this video we'll discuss how the Venom series uses state of the art workflows and visual effects software such as Autodesk Maya for animation to produce award winning visual effects for its most recent installment. Many of our students are curious about the software and techniques that are used to bring these record breaking movies to life throughout each installment. We'll take a look at how Venom has evolved over the years with technological advancements and how the characters in the universe are created. In this video, we'll discuss how these award-winning effects are made by the best studios in the world, paired with state-of-the-art tools such as integrating 3D assets with practical costumes to enhance the superhero characters, how live-action reference footage is used to inspire original acting choices, and how all of the elements are assembled together to create some of the most unique characters. Okay. We are drunk. <laughs> To create Venom for the movie franchise, the challenge was bringing alive two very different people into one character. A significant amount of visual effects work was involved in translating the two-dimensional villain from the comic books into the real world. This includes creating the symbiotic and toned forms of Venom, animating the character's shape-shifting abilities, and ensuring realistic lighting for the unique patterns of Venom's tendrils. Venom was created entirely using visual effects. Several stunt performers were used as stand-ins for Venom on set, and the visual effects team added several CG elements such as tentacles to enhance the action. The visual effects team used motion capture to capture the movements of stunt performers and actors. Reference markers were used throughout the production for the animated motion capture to create the most realistic movements for Venom. The data was then used to animate the 3D versions of Venom. Advanced facial animation techniques were used to bring Venom's expressions to life. The team focused on capturing the subtle nuances of Tom Hardy's performance to create a believable character. The visual effects artist spent a significant amount of time developing the texture and material for Venom's skin. They aimed to create a realistic, organic look that was both intimidating and repulsive. Several shots involved complex wire work to create the illusion of Venom's movements. Tom Hardy was attached to wires to make it look as if he was being pulled around by Venom. Concepts were drawn out for ideas on how Venom could act separately from Eddie in the same room like an annoying roommate. The ideas showed a concept that a symbiote without its host wouldn't be able to have a functioning body, so it was imagined that Venom would remain attached to Eddie by strings and filaments while looking like an amorphous blob. Quick pause to tell you a little bit about class creatives. They offer a top-ranked game design curriculum online. All courses are taught by industry veterans with experience from studios such as Disney, Naughty Dog, Insomniac, Google, and more. Learn the entire process of animation and motion capture using Autodesk Maya and Blender's Grease Pencil by following the methods used to create blockbuster Marvel superhero style animation. The full animation workflow is explained in detail in their masterclass courses. Learn professional workflows such as 3D character modeling, utilizing industry standard software such as ZBrush, Autodesk Maya, and Substance Painter. The entire character design workflow is covered from start to finish in their masterclass offerings. Extensive character rigging courses teach the process of how to custom rig characters for all of your project needs. Land that new job, receive higher pay, and stand out from the competition. The great thing about Class Creatives is the ability to learn at your own pace and your own schedule. Get started today for free with the link in the description. Hey, Eddie. Yeah. You do love me! No, I do not. You do! I do not. You do! I love you. Yes, you do. Not one bit. You do not love all. me. No, not at all. You do. I do not. You. Not at all. For Venom, Let There Be Carnage, the sequel to the 2018 installment, Venom may look unchanged from the first film. However, Venom was entirely rebuilt with over 4 million polygons and 380 face shapes. The rebuild also made use of a three-layer muscle fat skin simulation with over 50 simulated muscles to give him a more realistic athletic build. The filmmakers created concept art and key art to visualize how Carnage would look and move. This helped to establish the character's design and aesthetic. During the concept phase, spiky pincher shapes were well received with the director and were kept for the maquette design stages. Carnage was also imagined to generate a more organic looking arsenal of vicious spikes, pinchers, thorns, and claws for weaponry. Unpredictable attacks were a key characteristic for Carnage since he was a creature of chaos. Ideas were explored where throughout the course of the movie, Carnage would progressively become less and less humanoid looking. A physical maquette of Carnage was sculpted to give the filmmakers a tangible reference for the character's proportions and details. 
The filmmakers drew inspiration from octopuses and squids when designing Carnage. This gave him a unique and alien appearance. The creators wanted to distinguish Venom from Carnage by giving them different physical attributes and abilities. Carnage was asymmetrical and could take on any shape while displacing energy that he took on. For Carnage, L-System's tentacles were created to extend his anatomy. Carnage was designed to be a multi-limbed creature with arms and legs that had the same priority as his tentacles. This allowed him to move in a variety of ways. The tentacles were blocked out by animators in Autodesk Maya, which were then passed on to the effects team where the Houdini team would recursively iterate within and around them. Prototyping the tentacles took the effects team roughly three weeks to complete. Several stages of planning took place for the shot where Cletus turns into Carnage. The idea was to show how Carnage and Cletus are bonded at a molecular level to contrast how Eddie is more like a suit over the body. Fighting styles were concepted out to differentiate between the two characters, where Carnage would have a more wild style of fighting, targeting, severing, and maiming, while Venom would generate shields, lassos, and tendrils. For sequences like the Prison Break, 3D previs and storyboards were created to support the director's vision to have Carnage rampage through the prison hall like a wave of destruction. The Shining's River of Blood sequence was an inspiration for the concept. During development of the movie, Carnage had a final boss form called Uber Carnage, where he would grow to gigantic proportions. This idea was ultimately changed during the production process to the cathedral sequence. Complex environments such as the cathedral involved over 500 CG lights, multiple transformations, set extensions on nearly every plate shot, and over 125 full CG shots. Many of the complex motorcycle chase sequences were elaborately planned out beforehand to ensure the shoot would go as smoothly as possible. Storyboards were utilized for shot planning and green screen shot takes were composited together to create seamless action sequences for the critical moments. Stunt performers like Joe Dryden and Robbie Madison were used to perform jumps and other stunts on the motorcycle, adding a layer of realism to the action sequences. The visual effects team integrated the tendrils into the scene where Tom Hardy is thrown from the bike, showcasing the close collaboration between the visual effects artist and performers to create a seamless and believable final product. Practical effects were used to merge 3D elements with real life shots to enhance the believability. Makeup was used to give Tom Hardy a more monstrous appearance. The visual effects shots needed to be seamlessly integrated with the live action footage. This required careful attention to detail and coordination between the visual effects and live action teams. The lighting and rendering process was crucial for achieving the desired look for Venom. The visual effects team experimented with different lighting setups to create a sense of atmosphere and mood. A digital double of Tom Hardy was created to portray Venom in certain scenes. This allowed the visual effects team to create more complex and dynamic shots without relying solely on practical effects. Over 50 digital doubles were created with costume variations for the critical actors in the film. Prior to his own solo films, Venom appeared theatrically in 2007 in Sam Raimi's final installment, Spider-Man 3. It's interesting to look back at how limited visual effects were at the time and what they were able to accomplish compared to today's take on the character. Venom animation tests showed how the animators were trying to capture his movements like big cats, such as tigers, panthers, and cheetahs. They created musculature deformations in the 3D mesh to try and convey realism, which was state-of-the-art at the time. Animation tests were created to test the CG model and for movements during production. Motion capture, 3D scanning, and blue screen were all part of the workflow, blending live action and 3D elements, much like the modern-day versions of the character today. Several elements were created completely in 3D. Early tests of the symbiotic goo were not approved by Sam Raimi as they were not menacing enough. So more tests were created that felt more handcrafted and were more hand animated to capture the 3D elements and how they had more of an attacking action element to their movements. Several tests were created by the animators to give more life to how the material latches onto Spider-Man and other characters in the film. These initial tests would move on to more advanced sequences based on the approved movements from the tests and grow in visual complexity. 
We can see a lot of the traits from the early versions of Venom in movies that are carried on to the modern day installments and how they have been enhanced with modern day technology and better acting abilities. Well that about wraps up this video on how the Venom movie franchise utilizes state of the art visual effects tools such as Autodesk Maya to create some of the most anticipated movie sequels time and time again and how state of the art software workflows and practical effects are an important integral piece to the feature film creation process. All departments work together to bring something new to each installment of these franchises. The newest entry in the series looks better than ever. We will be watching in theaters on release day. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Perfect.